first off, uh, first off, congratulations on uh, the success on the album. I just want to sing. It's a great record. So Thanks. I'm sure that must be very exciting. Uh, what's been the most surprising thing about all this, all the success that you're experiencing right now? The most surprising thing about the success is the fact that when I was in the studio recording songs, some of the songs for the album, I really didn't expect for them to make the album. Um, I was pretty much experimenting with a lot of different ideas, trying to see, um, trying to see what I could do, you know, uh, messing around with my potential. Mm -hmm. um, it just so happened that those songs uh, turned out the way that they did, and it got the response that they had. Um, so, for one, I'm I'm really grateful that. I'm really grateful that those songs made it because it really sees, it really helps people to see, you know, where I'm coming from and where I plan to go, you know, is so far off. So it'll, it'll, it'll really help for people to grow with me. Why did you think that some of the songs weren't going to end up on the, uh, or be released at all? I mean, what well, was it about them? I thought that way because not to say that I didn't take it seriously, mm -hmm. however, I was more, I had a more of a experimental mentality towards it than an actual, okay, I'm gonna work on these songs. Mm -hmm. It was more so, let me see what happens if I do this, and let me see what happens if I do that, you know? Um, I had a lot of pent up creativity inside, so maybe that's the reason why it turned out the way that it did. Right. Um, however, there's a whole lot more that I know that I can do that I haven't really, I haven't really pushed too hard, mm -hmm. you know. I, and that's the thing. I didn't push too hard doing this, and for it to turn out the way that it did, that makes me feel that much better about my creativity, about my artistry. You know, I thank God for it. There, there does seem to be like a very freeform style yeah. to uh, to everything, in mm -hmm. sort of to the music, to the album. Mm -hmm. um, so, was creating the album in that way your intention or I guess or was it more just like you said well it well it's like see the person the kind of person that I am I'm I'm really meticulous and systematic and methodical and analytical and intense and you know it just so happened that during the process of recording these songs I dropped that baggage you know I just did whatever came to mind and however I felt at the time I had help from um, my writing partner, um, that was another thing, you know, that was another, it's just a humbling situation to write with someone else. But it was cool because we pretty much think alike, so he made the situation that much more convenient for me to just be myself and do what I do, you know, and that's, that's why, I guess that's why it feels the way that it does, you know, because that was the mentality that I had, more of a free-flowing mentality. Um, not to say that I won't have it on my next project. Um, I'm pretty much a, a laid-back character, you know, and I, and I take that approach towards my artistry. However, sometimes when it comes to uh, when it comes to fine-tuning it, and when it comes to putting a stamp on it, that's when I become more intense and right. meticulous and start, you know, brushing stuff off and putting things in their spaces. Well, let me back up a little bit here. Do you, do you remember like, when when you first discovered that you had a love for music? I discovered that when I was about thir 13, around 13. See, I always knew I could do it, mm -hmm. you know. Even when I was five, I knew I could sing. I knew I could. I had a love for music, but I didn't notice that it was so big of a thing until, you know, around puberty and everything, when things start to matter differently and you see what can get you attention or what things you can do. You know, just, just to basically, you know, uh, things that you could actually do in life and get credit and respect yeah. for it, you know? What was it specifically, though, besides, like, hitting puberty that made you, like, awaken to this, like, hey, man, I want to I do this for a career. I want to pursue music. Well, I didn't, think, I didn't think to actually want to pursue a career out of it until about 16, mm -hmm. you know? That, that's around the what am I going to do with my life phase, <laughs> you know? And your parents are screaming on you, do something, do something. <laughs> you know, I was, I was pretty rebellious. And I always knew that I, it was more so like creativity, you know, and there were so many things that I was into, you know. Um, being in a, an ADD poster child, I couldn't stay focused 
on anything you know it's like anything creative i would right. i would try to get into so i even it even got to a point where i started surrounding myself with creative people that were into different forms of creativity and until it came to a point where i had to make something out of my life i had to choose something to start making some moves to start producing you know some kind of anything your father was a musician though also right yeah, he st he stopped he stopped playing uh, to pursue the family life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did did he encourage you at all to to get into this? Not so much. It was more like my lessons from my father was more just by being around him and observing. I would ask him questions. He would tell me it's it's not as though because I don't think he really knew that I wanted to be in music because I didn't make it so clear at home. Mm -hmm. It was always when I left home, you know, and I hung around my friends and people that I knew. They knew more mm. about me than, you know, my parents did probably, you know. Well, they're my parents, so they know. But I didn't really share that much with them. I was I was a hard head, you know. <laughs> I mean, now we're the best of friends. I can sure. talk to them about anything. And they're, but, they're obviously probably thrilled to death that you're, you know, here yeah. you are, your first album. And yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You're still a, still a pretty young guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> I mean, a lot of things that I'm, a lot of things that I'm doing now, they really didn't expect because I didn't, I, I didn't really talk to them too much. You know, I had a problem with authority and <laughs> kind of saw them as the enemy. I mean, I loved them. <laughs> sure. But yeah. I think that's all pretty normal stuff yeah. for teenagers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, now, when you first got into music, though, you had, you were headed off more into like a hip hop direction. Is that right? Not so much hip hop. It was more just underground, mm -hmm. you know. I wanted to be an underground, independent artist, you know. I, I, I figured I'd been through the starving artist thing. I could do it for a little while longer, who cares? <laughs> but except for the fact that, you know, I wanted to I wanted to do something for my family, you know, my parents and my brothers and sisters, and hopefully set something up for my personal family and my kids. And the fact that I wanted to touch the world and be like Stevie Wonder, I chose to, you know, get into the music business. Um, I felt as though I had a lot more to offer. I mean, I, I have my little hang-ups about it. I mean, but a job is a job is a job. Mm -hmm. It's all in how, what you, what you, what you choose, you know, to accept and use to your advantage. I read an interview uh, that you did. Uh, I forget for which magazine, but you said that you felt that your artistry would not be appreciated in the mainstream record industry. I did feel that way. Why? Because. I saw a lot of acts coming out, you know, signed left and right, and I'm thinking, damn, I know I can do better than this, you know? And it's like, it's like, I'm, I'm not saying that it's fair, you know, and I'm not even trying to justify it or anything. It's like, I started, I started seeing, you know, the standard of the record industry, and I'm like, if this is the standard, like, <laughs> you know, so I was like, you know what, fine, I'll just go my own route and I'll go to, you know, the little hole in the wall clubs and, you know, do little shows and sell out and whatever, and do, just do the little independent thing. Because I would, I would have been content with that. However, I couldn't really promise myself the fact that I would create a good foundation for my family. Mm -hmm and that I could, you know, touch the world. You know, I, it it didn't start out to, it wasn't really that big of a deal, you know, touching the world because I was like, I'm, I'm already getting what I want out of it. You know, for the most part, I'm doing it for myself. You know, if anybody else appreciates it, then that's cool. However, I saw, I couldn't stop, I couldn't stop thinking about how, you know, I felt when I listen to a Stevie Wonder song, you know, and Stevie Wonder's worldwide, mm -hmm. you know, and I just, it's like, what if, what if I could have inspired somebody, but I couldn't get to them because I had no distribution, you know? So it's, it's, all, it's all, I mean, it's obviously, it's partially a business move, but yeah. it is just a step to get your music yeah. heard by more people to, to be a part of yeah. a major label. Yeah, for the what most do, What do you, uh, <coughs> or has it been what you expected? to work with a major label as opposed to like staying Not really. In Not really. And it's like on both on, on in both perspectives, positively and negatively. I mean, negatively is not, you know, like they always say all that glitter and gold, you know. <laughs> it's it's not, you know. But more on the positive side, that doesn't necessarily mean that 
um, it's it's fake per se, you know. It's all in perception, you know. It's all in how you manipulate the situation to your benefit, you know. It's like a lot of things are sugar coated, mm -hmm. you know, and some things need to be sugar coated. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, however, in my case. I don't feel as though everything needs to be sugar-coated. Some things need to be put out as is, and uh, with with faith, you know, in the audience, and have them choose, you know, either or and whatnot. I think, I think when you start to sugarcoat things and start to, you know, make things out to be what they aren't, it's almost like you're patronizing, you know, the audience. You're almost insulting their intelligence. You know, so that when they do find the real out, they're like, what? It was this all the time? You know what? Uh, damn, I ain't no, you know what I mean? It's like, I didn't, I didn't want to be that kind of artist to come out, you know, in this front. And they're like, hey, 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 hey. They're like, oh, he's nice, he's nice. And then when I start being myself, they're like, uh, I don't know. You know, I wanted to come out as myself so that I'll be appreciated as such. If anything, I'll enhance mm -hmm. what it is, you know. I would, but I, I never wanted to come out as something and then have to change it. Right, you, you want know? to stay genuine. Yeah, I real. mean, I feel as though that's how, I, that's how it's been in living my life, you know. I feel as though when I keep it real with people, they keep it real with you, mm -hmm. you know. When you let people know what they're dealing with, in the long run, they start to let you know what, what they're dealing with, whether, you know, depending on how they react to it, you'll know who's real and who's not, mm -hmm. you know. And I think that it's only right and it's only fair to treat, you know, this situation. I mean, this situation to me is, is, is unlike any other in my life. You know, it's just another situation, you know, and I, I plan to use it <laughs> and treat it as such. It's another part of my life. Well, let me ask you about the, let's talk a little bit about the music here. The, you know, a lot of the songs, or most of the songs <laughs> really on the album, deal with a, a universal theme, topic mm -hmm. of love and mm -hmm. relationships. How do you think that your songs are different in the scope of those types of songs? Um, well, like I said, when I was in the studio working on these songs, my main thing was to be creative, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't so much different. I think the fact that I am being that much create that, that much more creative about it is the fact is that that's making me different, mm -hmm. you know, um, I chose particularly love songs because you know, they were they were pretty easy to get along with. You know, everybody could understand love songs and whatever. And I, I used love songs more as a as as a catalyst for the most part, just to you know, just to milk the different you know opportunities mm -hmm. and just just so I can create different. Excuse me, I can create an alternative way, you know, of writing songs. It just got so redundant after a while, you know. Yeah. People started saying pretty much the same things, using pretty much the same format, and I just wanted to be different. I just, I just wanted to be creative with it, mm -hmm. you know. It's, it doesn't take much at all. It doesn't take much. It just just step out, just step out of the box for a second, and do what you really feel, right. as opposed to saying what you really feel in other people's words. Right, right. How, how much of your personal self do you reveal in the lyrics that you write or in the music that you're, you're making? Not really so much no. on this one. It's, I'm more of a storyteller on this, on this project. Um, you know, a lot of situations I've personally been through. Um, some situations I know people that have been through it. So, uh, some situations are just basic standard life situations that everybody goes through, you know. Um, mm -hmm. For the most part, um, yeah, like I said, I'm I'm more of a storyteller on this project. You know, I'm I'm a little impartial because it I was more of a student, you know, going right. through it than anything. Um, I'm starting to learn the potential of a lot of things, so I'm gonna start taking things that much more personally and being more personal. That's good. That's a good. I think I think your fans will, will appreciate you. You know, they get a, to get a, getting a, a better view of the kind of person you are through your music. Um, you mentioned a number of times Stevie Wonder mm -hmm. a, little, a little while ago, mm -hmm. and I'm just I'm wondering how, how you incorporate the soul music of the 70s mm -hmm. into your interpretation of that style these days. Well, it's almost involuntary because it's like, it's like seeing your ABCs, 
-hmm. You know, you hear you are hear it so many times, you learn it, you make it your own. It's like you don't have to think about them anymore. You just know that C comes out the B. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 almost the same thing with with this. It's like I don't have to think or work hard to try to be you know quote unquote soulful. I just am. You know, my thing now is articulating it. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, more so that sound because that was more prevalent you know in my early ages mm -hmm. uh the stevie wonder sound the donny hathaway sound the marvin Gaye sound earth wind and fire george clinton parliament funkadelic sound the james brown sound slime the family stone sound it was it was there you know and whether conscious or subconscious i picked up on it you know and use it as Lessons, right? You know, and I made I made them my own, um, and it's and not only it's not only that it's just music in general, you know, different genres of music, you know, I can I can relate back to so many times that I've watched BET, then watched VH1, then watched uh, MTV, and like I can watch these channels all day because I could always find something that I was interested in, mm -hmm. you know, whether it was jazz or rock or pop or blues or gospel or hip hop or Latin or reggae, alternative, drum and bass, progressive, <laughs> whatever. You know, it's it's all music to me. It's all relative. It's all in, you know, what I choose to use, yeah. you know, to express myself. Do you feel a responsibility to keep soul music alive today in modern music? Yes. However, soul music, you know, supersedes R&B, mm -hmm. you know, there's soul music in all genres, I think, I feel. I feel soul music is um, basically anybody who expresses themselves genuinely, you know, through music. You know, I think a lot of, a lot of genres, if not all genres, were, 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 were basically founded on that same space, you know, uh, jazz music, hip hop music, rock music, uh, blues music, mm -hmm. country music. It's people that needed to express themselves, you know, and that's where it comes from. It's just you expressing you, right. you know, and it, it, soul music supersedes genre. It's just that, you know, soul music in particular, genre wise, category wise, they take upon that title so hardcore because we put so much of ourselves, you know, without even trying into our music, mm -hmm. you know, whereas other different genres, not all of them, but some other genres, they try so much to control it, you know. Sometimes you need to just let it be what it is, you know. 